we will be taking a session in collaboration with the national law, doctor national law university sonipat but at the same time though we have kept the topic tech, uh, tips and tricks of the cracking of the examination especially which are having multiple questions since mr raghavan is a person who speaks in a very subtle manner and he explains the things in a manner we would also like to understand from him what are the tips and tricks to go for a webinar how to be prepared for that and since we have kept the session short since the classes have started on and when the national law school um, sonipat collaborated we thought that a lot of students will ultimately be cracking the examination as such where there are multiple choice questions for them to understand the tricks and that too from a lawyer who has many tricks up his sleeves in the knowledge of law and i can say this this actually goes the today's session is beyond law we will be discussing as to how one can crack the multiple uh, choice questions and he will be sharing ppts the i think especially the lawyers and the students who would like to crack the multiple choice questions would be quite benefited from them and in uh, in this university under the ages of dr vinay kapoor mehra the university is doing tremendously well it has created its niche in the market as such and as they say that though they are baby in the profession uh, in the university but they have taken giant leaps of making a mark not only in india but beyond that without taking much time i would request mr nagwan to take things forward and we are willing and actually quite excited to learn those tricks over to you mr nagwan thank you mr vikram yes. and uh, i thank you from radio mr sunil for the opportunity and uh, nice meeting the platform of the long gap because of something happened domestically so interestingly this topic i have been handling uh, for a long time um, since the days of uh, competitive examinations being held for students who are aspiring to become judges they did for uh, students who appeared for neat in tamil nadu because tamil nadu neat and always controversial so he told me that uh, the session on neat was uh, very useful for the purpose of cracking the um so called multiple choice questions which sound very easy to view with but very difficult to finish within the time stipulated where a lot of techniques are to be applied the techniques are not so complicated but they are somewhat uh, in the nature of requiring a kind of um, skill to be up so when vikas um, swekas asked me i thought of sharing this tricks and tips which i have shared with others for the benefit of student community or advocates who are aspiring to become Now judges, may I share the screen now? Okay. Is the um is the PPT uh, visible in the screen, sir? Yes. Okay. Now we can see the very first um, screen. I have described the types of test these are all preliminary but it may be in a position to understand things well to understand what is called uh, mcqs so normally we call them as achievement test in which we have two broad based standardized tests number 2 is teacher made test we are in the second limb of the achievement test called teacher made test under the teacher made test we have got three common and popular test called oral test and practical test and under the written test we have got three sub branches they are called essay type test written type so we are on the last branch of the objective achievement test called i repeat achievement test is of two kinds standardized and teacher made teacher made is of three types written test oral and practical test is of three types essay type short answer type and objective type we are now on the object type of examinations let us just go for a brief definition of the objective type questions as the topic itself suggests objective types are those items that can be objectively scored in which a person self options just remain that response is the answers so you are put a question and you are given a choice of questions 
out of the choice you have to choose the correct answer that is what is called objective and the questions are objectively scored an objective question usually has only one potential correct answer please understand the word potential correct answer because there lies the importance of choosing the best correct answer the word potential assumes much importance so an objective type question usually has only one potentially correct answer although there may be some room for answers that are to objective questions per contra on the course, which require a descriptive and explanatory answer for better clarity i can say normal examinations are of objective type and all the main examinations are of descriptive type so recognition type number 3 is problem solving type number 4 is simple recall oh, sorry number 3 is problem solving type so the objective tests are of three major types recall type recognition type and problem solving type among the three we have got a recall type being the first limb recall type is again divided into two top types simple recall type and sentence completion type so recall type is of two types simple recall type and sentence completion type and when we go for recognition type it has got three types multiple choice items true or false items and matching the items all these things we had in our school education i am just brushing up our or refreshing our memory for better appreciation of the questions being asked so recognition type is of three types multiple choice true or false items and matching the items then if you go for the third called a problem solving type we have got three major types rearrangement type analogy type and context dependent type so out of these how many will figure in our examination is the question to be seen now then we'll go to the first type called the recall type recall type as i already told you has got two types of recall examination number one simple i mean i'm sorry simple recall type number two is sentence completion type simple recall type is nothing but you are supposed to fill up a blank mostly at the end of the answer for example order 21 of cpc relates to the simple answer is execution proceedings so the simplest answer should be filled up and it will be left blank that's why it is called a simple recall type you are recalling the correct sentence in a particular place and if it is typed or if it is filled up the sentence makes a completion so it is called a simple recall type sentence completion type is where also a blank space is left but it is not usually at the end of the question it is anywhere in the middle of the question or answer you have to make a good guess where there will be lot of choices to be employed the best example would be this independence of judiciary is one of the dash of the constitution of india so that it cannot be revoked by an amendment so there are lot of clues in the answer itself number 1 independence of judiciary is first limb the first clue and it cannot be revoked by the amendment is the second clue so when you employ both the limbs together you can very easily guess the answer that the answer is the basic structures so independence of judiciary is one of the dash of the constitution it need not give you the meaning basic structure unless you just connect completion of the sentence with the two called which cannot be revoked by an amendment so the sentence completion type will have a blank space anywhere in the middle or in any portion of the sentence so that when you fill in the blanks the sentence becomes complete then we will go to recognition template this is the recognition type of questions we are now standing what is called the multiple choice items in the multiple choice items we employ lot of techniques will come to it a little bit later so when we go for the definition of multiple choice items we have two major parts the first part is called the stem the second part is called the responses stem is nothing but the question and responses are nothing but the answer so when you mean the stem 
the stem means the direct questions or the incomplete statements and the responses are also called options there may be 3 to 5 alternative responses which includes see in the responses we have two kinds of responses number 1 the key number 2 are the distractors so the factor is to be understood that the options or the responses may be the key in terms of offering the clues or they may be the distractors which distract your attention so that you will be lured to give an answer which may not be correct so that is why it is called the distractor so the recognition type we have multiple choice items in multiple choice item we have questions called the stem and the choices called the responses the responses may consist of the keys which are clues and the distractors which may give a slightly different clue so that we get distracted then we go to true and false items which we know very well the aspirants are asked to think and decide whether the statements which are given are true or false or right or wrong example is right of properties no more a fundamental right so we have to say true because it was once upon a time a fundamental right thereafter it was removed now article 300 ya says it's only a legal right so the statement is a true statement so we will give the answer called true this is one of the true or false item the third is common it is called matching the item which we have been following in our school days and examination time there will be two column the first column will have a kind of broad based genus and the second column will have a corresponding correct entry we have to match between the two in the example you can say column a has got five entries called a preliminary decree stay of suit relitigation restitution and order rejecting plaint in column b we have the answers which are jumbled for example secondly filed suit b decree c section 144 cpc d order 2 rule 2 cpc and e final degree if we match the entries in column a with the answers in column b we will have to choose the best answer by matching the five in the column with five in column b so the questions in column a are five in number the answers in column b are also five in number the five have to be matched with each other so the answer lies within the five choices we will have to match them where our um knowledge and experience helps for example if you go for a preliminary decree the matching answer would be a final decree if you go for stay of suit it will be secondly filed suit if you go for relitigation it is order to rule to cpc if you go for restitution it is section 144 cpc if you go for order rejecting plaint it is called a decree you know very well section 2 of the cpc defines a decree in which an order rejecting plaint is also found to be a decree so we match the two items by corresponding with the correct answers preliminary decree is corresponding to final decree stay of suit will correspond to secondly filed suit relitigation will correspond to order to rule to cpc restitution will correspond to section 144 cpc and an order rejecting plaint is a decree under section 2 of the cpc this is the matching the items technique then we'll have rearrangement this is very 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 simple in the sense that the question says the options are given you have to just rearrange as per the hierarchy for example you see the example vitiating factors of the contract we know you very well this five has to be rearranged so it is fraud coercion and your representation and your influence misrepresentation and uh, mistake these five have to be arranged in the order which is found in the indian contract act so there are only one question which has got five answer the five answers has to be arranged the answers are given in jumbled way you have to arrange them in the way the way of arrangement is not in your discretion it is there in the original source itself when we go to the analogy type this is very important where this preliminary examinations are found to be very very tricky so in this uh, kind of analogy type of questions the aspirant is requested to deduce the relationship that exists 
between the first two parts of the item and then apply to the third and fourth part. So please understand there will be four parts of a question. It will have two parts on the first line and two parts on the second line. So the aspirant is requested to deduce the relationship that exists between the first two parts of the item and then apply to the third and fourth part. Normally, the third part is given and the fourth part is missing and which is selected from the list of options. So out of the four parts, the third part is given missing and the missing part is given in the options. You can see the example. If article 14 is associated with equality, what is article 21 is associated to? This is what is called analogically. Article 14, equality. Article 21, blank or dash. So the answer is missing. So the analogy is what is the relationship between article 14 and equality should be understood to answer the question. So if article 14 is a provision that envisages and guarantees the right of equality, what is envisaged or protected or guaranteed by article 21? Here you are given four choices. The four choices are closer to each other. You have to choose the best answer. For example, if article 14 guarantees equality, article 21 protects freedom of speech, freedom of religion, minority rights, and personal liberty. Your idea about constitution of India, especially chapter three will give an answer that if article 14 relates to equality, article 21 relates to personal liberty. So the analogy is to understand the relationship between the first part and second part. And the same analogy can be applied to the second, third part and fourth part. This is what is called the analogy type. And we have to what is called context dependent type. This is not used in the preliminary examination, which is pictorial or verbal, but I could find that these pictorial and verbal are also given in um, analytical questions or questions which are derived to test your test of reasoning. Uh, even in um, NEET, I could see such questions. But I don't think the judicial aspirants are normally asked questions. But in Tamil Nadu, in the year 2019, in the preliminary examination, I could find a lot of pictorial or verbal questions for test of reasoning and analogy. Here, you will be given a pictorial or verbal representation from which you will have to give the answers. Now we'll go to the hero of the function or hero of the session, what is called the multiple choice questions. I told you already, it consists of the stem and options. The stem is the question. The answers are either the clues or the distractors. Now we'll go to the basic types of multiple choice questions. So your examination will consist of any of the basic five types of the multiple choice questions. So before understanding what is called the multiple choice questions and the tricks and tips, you have to understand the five basic types of the multiple choice questions. Number one is the best answer type. The second is called right or correct answer type. The third is multiple true or false types. Number fourth is reason assertion type. And number five is, uh, we have seen already, analogic type. I repeat once again, multiple choice questions are of five basic types. Best answer type, right or correct answer type, multiple true or false answer types, reason assertion type, and analogic type. We will go the first one. What is called best answer type? I have given an example. What is a precept? This is the question posed to the aspirant. And they are given four options. Transfer of the decree, order of one of the court to another court to attach property of the judgment debtor, execution of degree, all of the above. Here, all the three answers, A, B, and C are the closer answers. If you think for a while, what is called a precept, you may be, this is, a, this is what is called a distractor. The answers are not straight. You cannot so easily answer the question unless you understand the exact concept of a precept. For a transfer of the decree or order of one court to another court to attach property of the JD or execution of decree, 
the answer is b so b is the best answer so you may not say answer a or answer c is incorrect but the best answer is when a court is passing an order of attachment before judgment the court may be sitting prettily at chennai and the property may be at chandigarh so the court at chennai will issue a precept to the court at chandigarh this during the abj normally so the best answer has to be chosen it is only an example please go for a complete understanding of precept by your own what is called home work so this best answer option is very tricky in the sense that none of the choices are incorrect none of the choices are wrong but only one of the choices is closer to the question asked so when these kind of questions are asked please be very careful because most of the prelim examination have the negative marks for the incorrect or wrong answers then we'll go to the correct answer or right answer type i have one example after completion of investigation the police is to submit a final report to the magistrate right the question is then the magistrate is it has got four options bound by the report and accept the same if the police finds no ground to proceed further not bound by the conclusion drawn by the police and may order further investigation issue your process against the accused at both b and c so please understand that here there is no best answer the answer is the correct answer so the answer a b c or not the best answers here only one answer is the current answer so you have to find the correct answer and give the choice that so here the answers are not closer or not best only one is correct others are incorrect this is called the right or correct answer questions then third is multiple true or false type questions this type consists of the stem followed by several true or false statement the aspirants is to determine which of the statements are true or false the questions uh, given as an example will make it very simple to understand the question is which one of the following is correct statement number 1 is section 10 applies to civil suits only statement 2 is there must be two or more suits filed in different stages statement 3 is only trial of the case can be stayed number 4 all further proceedings in both cases are to be stayed so here you have to find out the correct choice which gives the true or false statement for example only 1 2 3 are correct or only 1 and 2 are correct or only 2 and 4 are correct or only 4 is correct so number 5 is all are correct here the answers are not a single answer it is a complex answer where there are more than one or two true statement you have to find out the correct statement which gives the true or false statement which are to be given as an answer this is called multiple true or false type this is also employed in the preliminary examination of multiple choice questions then i told you already analogy type i gave one more example in this analogy type the aspirant is requested to deduce the relationship that exists between the first two parts of the item and when applied to the third and fourth part normally third part is given and the fourth part is found missing and which is selected from the given list of options i give an example different example now if section 11 cpc relates to the judicata what order to rule to cpc relates to so your experience of your reading of cpc makes it very clear that order to rule to cpc does not apply to stay of suits order to rule to cpc does not apply to suits filed by minors order to rule to cpc does not apply to scheme suits then the first best example or the correct answer is if section 11 of cpc is the enabling provision that defines what is called res judicata order to rule to cpc is the enabling provision that that defines what is called re litigation so the correct answer is b re litigation here an analogy is drawn between the first two part and the third part or the fourth part is left out you will have to find out the analogy between the third and the fourth part now we are coming to the very important part of this session 
we have seen what is called an objective type of question we have seen what is called the types of uh, questions involved in a multiple choice questions we have seen various types of the multiple choice questions now having come to understand what are all the questions and what are all the types of questions that can be asked very important point is how to crack the examination that is what is the session is about that is what we are going to now crack one by one so i will give you some important tips to crack the multiple choice questions number one is time management very crucial i'll come to the tips one by one later i'll just give the broad based tips first time management is number one number two answering well known questions number three narrowing down the choices number four no guesses if there are negative marks number five make guesses if there is no negative mark number six tips for making guesses how to make a wild guess number seven answer includes all the above and none of the above and eight is keying your registration number that is found to be lacking in many of the answer sheet and number nine is tips for questions which more marks with negative marks and number 10 is if answers have more number of choices what is to be done we will see the tips one by one the first and foremost is the time management you know pretty well that multiple choice questions and any other question for the time being or for that matter should be answered within the particular time if you are supposed to answer the questions in descriptive time time may not be a crucial factor for example you may write a particular answer in descriptive time so fastly within 10 minutes and you can uh, allot the remaining 10 minutes for the other questions if you are asked to give five questions out of the eight questions asked but that is not the case in multiple choice questions you will be asked to answer 180 questions in a given 300 or uh, 3 hours 180 minutes so you may be left with either 1 minute for one question or at times less than a minute for one question so time makes all the sense so time management is very important so you know pretty well that all the questions carry the same mark in multiple choice question so you have to divide the time for all the questions equally so all questions carry equal marks so look at the time frame at the start before answering the questions please see how much time is allotted to you for example 3 hours or 180 minutes means please reduce 10 minutes and divide the time available time less the 10 minutes by the number of questions for example you are given 180 minutes reduce 10 minutes make in 160 minutes or 170 minutes and divide the number of questions with the 170 minutes so this is how you are supposed to deduce the time and after answering roughly one third of the questions for example if 180 questions are asked 180 minutes are available you have only 170 minutes to answer the question so after answering nearly 60 questions please have a look at your watch see how much time has passed then if allowed jot down the time when each section has to be done for example after choosing to reduce 10 minutes after allotting the time available after answering the first one third of the question please look at the time and see the what is the time available then start on to again dividing the number of time available with number of the questions that will give you a kind of confidence that you will be out of tension you can answer the remaining questions at ease this time management is to be done periodically so reduce 10 minutes first then available time should be divided into number of questions at, at the end of the answering of one third question please see the time once again and available remaining time should be divided by the unanswered question that is how you are supposed to manage your time then answer all the questions first so if you are sure of the answers if you are 100% sure of the answers that is called the best known answers please attend them immediately so don't waste your time on waiting to go for other questions if you know some of the questions 
very well then once that is over look at the tougher questions once you have chosen to answer the well known 100% assured questions go to the tougher questions here though it is here we are supposed to employ very important technique of the multiple choice questions your skill does not lie in answering the best known or well known answers or questions your skill is required and applied only when the answers are tough you are not able to find out the answers for the tougher questions so here also i just want you to look down and decide to exercise the following options what is called narrowing down and what is called eliminating these two are very important to understand the question and to crack the answers if you can narrow down them to two choices narrowing down means making the choices into less choices for example a question is asked and five choices are given so if the all if the question is tougher you are not able to exactly pinpoint the correct answer you have to narrow down the answers narrowing down includes the process of elimination by what is called narrowing down you are able eliminating answers which are not probably correct so try to narrow down the correct answers to two choices out of the five if five answers are given please eliminate three answers and just find only two answers which are close to each other to answer the question this is what is called narrowing down narrowing down means by applying elimination out of the five answers you are choosing only the two and you are going to exercise between the two which is correct so if you can narrow down them to two choices take a guess and choose the opinion again by elimination so you are going to apply the process of elimination at two stages elimination is first applied to narrowing down the choices from five answers to two answers and between the two answers if you want to choose the correct answer between the two you have to employ two mechanism or two process or two ideas number one is elimination number two is guesswork so between the two you can pick and choose the current answer either by a gut feeling or the what is called a guess a wild guess or by elimination between the two you can choose the right answer naturally naturally and mostly and formally first guess is always found to be a correct answer intuitively so between the two if your gut feeling says this could be the current answer please go for a safe bet so if you can narrow down them to two choices take a guess and choose the elimination by what is called uh, the opinion of elimination and the first guess is always better intuitively and rule out the most obvious wrong answer while doing so then in examination which have negative marks you should be triply triply or four times very careful because that is going to give a very bad score if you give more wrong answers so in examination with negative marks don't ever resort to a complete wild guess at more than one third of the questions for example if 150 questions are asked you are not sure of the correct answer if there are negative marks your guess wild guess questions should not exceed 50 questions at no point of time guess work should be employed for more than one third of the total questions then only if there is no negative mark you may try to make all the questions by guess work in case of negative marks your guess work should not exceed one third of the total questions then how to take wild guesses this is the area where we find it very difficult to employ what is called elimination so here making a wild guess involves a kind of tips and tricks being followed here i give some tips which may not be full proof but which are by and large proved to be correct number one longer answers are mostly better at being correct mostly the lengthiest answers are found to be correct so they may be safely chosen answers with always answers with never etc are not always correct they are only seldom correct because they are always exception 
whenever the answer has the word always or whenever the answer have the word never it may not be always correct because there are always exception to these words called always and never it never decides things conclusively if there are more than one answer which you think is correct and there is an option called all of the above if there are more than one answers which according to you is correct and if one of the option is all of the above please choose it without wasting the time because when there are more than two correct answers normally the question will have the answer will have all of the above as one of the answers then don't forget this is, sounds very silly but it takes place out of what is called tension and stress most of the people they fail to key in our registration number please have in your mind that your total effort is wasted unless you just key in your registration number then at the end i told you already to employ or reduce 10 minutes for some purposes that 10 minutes is to be used at this stage at the end use the remaining 10 minutes when the session of your answer is going to be end you please use the remaining 10 minutes to recheck the answers ensure that all questions you know well are answered if no negative marks are given this 10 minutes is going to be used for revisiting or rechecking what you have already answered who knows that rechecking may give you some additional good marks to you then what happens if negative marks are given normally negative marks are 0.25 or 1/4 of the full marks so if negative marks are 1/4 that is 0.25 out of 1 of the positive marks and there are only four options you can make guesses at least in half to 1/3 of the questions and never beyond 1/3 i told you already if there are negative marks please don't opt for guesses for more than 1/3 of the total questions and if the number of choices is more than 4 it is better not to guess answer limit to a third of unknown answer if the number of choices is more than 4 it is better not to guess answers limit to a third of unknown answer the next one strategy so we have seen tips which are 10 in number strategy is slightly different from tips tips are the practical clues strategy is something you call the process a thinking process which you apply and employ to see that the questions are answered easily so mcqs are mostly tricky ones they are not straight to uh, be answered because the preliminary examination is uh, conducted for all the people who apply for the examination the purpose is to screen down only a handful of say example one third or one fifth of the total number of persons appeared for the examination so the purpose of the mc quiz is to eliminate unsuccessful or undeserving people or to choose only the cream of the students appearing for the examination so mc quiz are mostly tricky ones but with a little bit of smartness the student can easily crack them here we need not a hard work in my opinion smart work is more important than hard work so with a little knowledge on the subject and a good strategy you can easily answer all the mcqs i'll give some strategy once again please very important where we fail to deliver is you don't read the question properly in a haste to answer the answers straight we jump to the answers straight without understanding the questions properly please understand the questions properly equate every answer to the question asked please relate the question and answer equate them chop out the wrong answer that is called elimination if every step fails be confident and do the guesswork if you are not able to employ any of the techniques and find the correct answer then we'll finally go for the guesswork where elimination and narrowing down is going to be applied once again repeat longest answers or longest answer with more options are often correct and grammatical aid can at times help you to crack the answer so he has seen tips which are ten in number we can see some basic strategy now i come to some tricks which are to be applied in answering the multiple choice question number 1 take up one question at one time please don't confuse you with one question on the hand 
and another question on the other hand. Please attend one question only at a given time. Don't go and jump or don't just go for a scrambled manner to answer next page or the third page or the fourth page. Number two, don't waste your time if you are not getting the answer for any question. Your time may be one minute for one question. If you think for a long time for more than one minute for one question, you are going to lose the chance for writing the correct answer for the another question. So don't waste too much of time for questions which are not in your position to be answered immediately. Just leave them to be seen at the end of this session. Then you can come back always at the end. For those questions which are not answered, you can come back at the end after answering all the known questions and cover all the possible answers as fast as you can. Once you are sure of the answers, please don't waste your time. Cover all the possible answers as best, as fast, as speedy as possible. And take up a small mini break. In case of any impasse, in case of any difficulty in your thought process, in case of any problem in finding out the answer, place a small break of 10 seconds to 30 seconds. Then you may be able to refresh your memory and come to the correct answers and execute a rescue round. The rescue round is what I told you. The 10 minutes time taken at the end of the session is called a rescue round. So reserve those questions which are tricky, which you are not able to answer, to be answered at the rescue round. And finally, if no idea is striking you, after employing all the strategies, tricks and tips, you are not able to answer them, plus go for a logical guess. Your guess should be logical so that you are able to identify your logic to apply and find out the correct answer. Then how to avoid negative marks. This is very important in the sense that most of the time the student is not able to get good marks because he is able to avoid securing a negative mark. So negative marks will go to spoil your show if more answers you give are false in the question of answering them. So always try to attempt maximum number of questions. If you want to avoid negative marks to be occupying your score sheet, you should have attempted more questions out of the all the questions. If you are able to attempt all the questions, well and good. Number two, if you think that the first option is correct, if you think that the first option you have chosen is correct, you will have to ensure that there is no option called all of the above. Whenever all of the above or none of the above is employed, you should be very careful because the question is tricky. If all of the above or none of the above are employed, please be sure that there is no single correct best answer. There are more than two closely correct answers are given. Follow the same rule if none of the above is also given as one of the options. So please try to understand if all of the above or none of the above are given as one of the option, there is no single correct answer. There is chance for there, is, there are chances for more than two questions or three questions which are correct to the questions asked. Then check all the options, even if you are sure about the answer. Having answered everything during the rescue round, please check once again, though you are sure that the answer is correct. At times, you may have a second thought you may try to find out the correct answer after answering some other question. So please check all the options, even if you are about, sure about the answer. If you are sure about answer A being correct, please once again read answer B, C, and D, and find that your option is correct. Don't choose one option without seeing other options at all. Then in case of confusion, then skip the question for the rescue round and move forward to the second question. Then. If you have a little idea about the topic, then try to attempt. To avoid negative marks, you should have an idea about the question. If you don't have any idea about the question, you will end up in a wrong answer that will endure in a negative uh, mark. So try to have a little idea about the topic. You may be able to crack the answer. Then imagine the topic to think logically without looking at the options. If you are not able to get the answer, any of the tricks and tips and strategies you are going to employ is of no use. Please think logically 
and imagine the topic to think logically so that the topic will give you a better idea about giving an answer to the question which is tougher if you have only one gut answer and other knowledge answers please choose the knowledge answer i have two things to say when you make a guess there are two kinds of guesses one is called a gut answer that is what your mind says another is called a knowledge answer what your brain says between the gut answer and between the knowledge answer the knowledge answer is always closer to the correct answer so between the gut and the knowledge answer please go say with the knowledge answers and try to use a true or false method in case of negatively worded questions when the questions and the options are negatively worded especially when the question start with a negative covenant or word true or false method can be applied to decide which one is more correct so true or false method can be used in case of negatively worded questions then analyze well and convince yourself before marking the answer so if you fail to analyze the question and if you don't try to convince yourself your answer may not be or may not be correct so please analyze the questions well and get the answers to your brain and convince yourself that you are correct then only mark the answer last but not the least as per the research results that has been done so far your first guess will always be right in case of your guess work your first impression or your first guess is always a right guess so in case of wild guesses your first guess always proved to be right as per the research has done so i want to sum up before closing this session please read the entire question don't jump into logical answers answer it in your mind first review the answer options read the entire question don't jump into logical answers answer them in your mind first review the answer options eliminate wrong answers elimination of 100% incorrect answers will ensure your choice is correct use the process of elimination cross out incorrect answers and then focus on the remaining answers select the best answer prefer best answer to current answer between best answer and correct answer always best answers are the correct answers read every answer option don't assume the correct answer without reading all the answers you should have read all the answers before answering the questions and answer the questions you know first well and answering easier questions will give you a confidence and time to answer the tougher one later make an educated guess this is very important for unsure answers and to avoid negative marks make an educated and knowledge guess if only you are able to eliminate at least one or two incorrect answers you will be able to make some good sense and do not select all of the above unless you are pretty sure that any one of the answers is incorrect and do not choose in none of the above if you are confident that at least one of the answer is true all of the above will be correct unless one of the answer is incorrect and none of the above will be correct at least one of the option is true when there are seemingly two correct answers in such a case all of the above is given please choose it that will be the correct option place your bet on the positive option in most cases the positive option is probably true if there is also a negative option when there are two option given choose the positive option than the negative option the more informative the more information the better answer correct answers usually contains more informative than other options grammatical aid can at times be useful and finally the best time for new beginning is now and all the best thank you sir for the opportunity yeah, yeah mr amit before you, uh, you can share your thoughts unmute yourself problem Thank you, sir. Really, uh, Raghavan sir, this this you know lecture was very thoughtful, very insightful. And what are the tips and tricks you have given to the students and all the participants present over here? Really, you know they will help a lot for cracking the exams. Otherwise, when we appear in any of the exams having multiple choice questions, 
sometimes what we do just go through and uh, some of the students or some of the you know our parents say just just make you know, you know uh, that letter and all that they just they don't go for them in details you what kind of questions are they they don't understand what are the tricks you have been given like you know uh, first of all we should take care of the time uh, time management this this is a very pertinent to keep in mind okay sometimes what happens if we, we we are just attempting the questions only if suppose there are 100 questions we are far away we have been attempted 70 questions and there are chances that out of those 30 questions which are just remaining and we have just a time of you know 20 minutes and there are many questions out of those 30 questions you know better 20 questions so whatever the trick you have given ki first of all we have to go towards whatever we know well first of all we should attempt those very questions which we know very well there after if if the negative negative marking is not there then we should at the last in the remaining time whatever is you know told ki we must have a time span of 10 minutes we should lessen the time in a time of 10 minutes so thereafter we can make the you know logical guesses in in the last so time management it itself is very pertinent whenever we are attempting any of the uh, exams having the multiple choice questions you have very rightly stated ki suppose we are appearing in any of the you know uh, 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 subjective uh, exam so then we have a choice ki you know suppose you are attempting a question of 20 marks you can lessen you can lessen the uh, five lines or 10 lines you can you can give the logical reasons whatever you know true answer is you can you can interpret in in, in your way but this this is not in case of the multiple choice question examinations you can put your insights in very short words whenever we are appearing in a subjective exam but this is not in a case of so we have to keep in mind all these very things whatever the insight you have given to our students to all the participants that is very nice very uh, you know very uh, thoughtful and very logically and very research based rather we can say we can say that this this you have made a lot of research uh, for for the preparation of this uh, lecture and as you said ki whenever you know logical reasoning or whatever the research itself is stating ki whatever first comes in first mind that that comes as it were so that is very much true so really really it was really a very nice uh, you know insight very nice uh, words that you have been given or whatever the tricks and the tips uh, you know, uh, we have given us for cracking these very examinations that is very really nice and you know we are very thankful to you for for giving such a uh, wonderful lecture wonderful lecture for our students and all the participants over here and i really uh, from the core of my heart i express my uh, heartiest thanks for sparing your time and i am also thankful to beyond law clc especially vikas sir for associating with us uh, for conducting such webinars on this this kind of Uh, issues this kind of uh, uh, topics which are very much helpful for the students and really this this lecture will definitely you know very 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 beneficial for the upcoming you know uh, examinations for our students so thanks once on, again sir thanks a lot and we hope ki in very short span of time we'll definitely connect with you and we'll have a, another uh, topic and we'll have your insights on the same topic so thank you thanks a lot once again on behalf of dr vr ambedkar national law university and on behalf of our honorable vice chancellor ma'am who is not being present over here uh, due to her busy schedule so again i also uh, express my thanks on behalf of our honorable vice chancellor ma'am and the other authorities of the university thank you so much and all the participants you are all you know you are also being the a uh, privilege persons to uh, have a thanks from dr vr ambedkar national law university and our students and all the participants thank you so much so now over to you sir vikas sir over to you now the microphone is yours once we were doing the tips and tricks for uh, these competitive exams with multiple choice question the first and the foremost tip which i could gather from mr raghavan was that one has to be very meticulous regarding the time management and once we wrote that the session would be from 5 to 8 6 uh, 
uh, Mr. Raghavan made it, uh, had ensured it that including the vote of welcome as well as the vote of thanks would wrap up by 6 p.m. That shows the meticulousness which Mr. Raghavan has. And his sessions, I can share with you, a lot of even the judicial officers, a lot of senior advocates do ask for his thoughts and insights the way he expresses. And as they say, he takes the session so seamlessly. By the end of the session, you realize that oh, the session is over. But maybe it is one hour, but they say it's a power packed program which will only give a part of the mind to think forward. Like what he rightly said, once it is a multiple choice question, you have to go by the knowledge, not by what your mind says. And maybe one can say that it is cramming, but it's not a cramming. But in fact, the more you practice, it's just even in the mathematics paper, like we were students, we used to remember by the question. Irrespective of the calculation, we used to know that the answer would be 844, irrespective of the way we calculate. And if there was a wrong, you could rework, relook. But that again, the time management works. As they say, time is also like a snake and ladder. You have to move forward, backward. And by the end of the day, you have to finish faster than what you, with whom you are playing the Ludo game, what we used to play in the childhood. So thank you to Dr. B.R. Ambedkar and Dr. Vinay Kapoor Mehra, as well as Amit Guleria and the students who have joined with us. And beyond that, the students and the lawyers or other persons beyond the legal fraternity have joined this session. We are all thankful that you have joined with us. And thank you, Mr. Raghavan. And we will take the legal sessions rather than the beyond law sessions with you because you have knowledge which can be always shared. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Namaskar.